So first of all, good morning, fellow policymakers, distinguished experts, entrepreneurs, professionals, practitioners in the field of medical technology. It might be a little bit cliche, and you probably heard this phrase from other speakers uh, before me, but it is truly a privilege to be here, surrounded by so many like-minded individuals today who share this common passion, this common passion for a brighter and more innovative future for healthcare. And when we speak about an innovative future for healthcare, we are speaking directly for an innovative and a better future for our society in general. I am very pleased to have been invited to deliver this keynote speech because the topic of um, MedTech is an intersection of various policy areas in which I work within the European Parliament on a daily basis since the first day I was elected as a Maltese representative in the EP in 2019. I am intrigued by the subject of MedTech because it brings together the health sector in its widest sense possible and technology, technology which is so important for us in all forms um, to improve, to improve the quality of lives of millions of men, women and children around the globe. Nowadays, through tools that we have at our disposal in the field of AI, artificial intelligence, and also real-time connectivity brought about by a coherent and a regulated digital space in Europe, medical professionals can access, understand, and also diagnose a greater number of ailments preventively, avoiding risks, avoiding pain, and also unnecessary ex post facto medical interventions to patients of all ages and of different backgrounds. I understand that the wealth of medical data being gathered by everyday electronic devices might be worrisome for a number of citizens, a number of persons who may be wary of the misuse and also the very commercialization of sensitive personal, personal data. However, I believe that we are living in a continent where we are fortunate enough to be operating within the European Union, which is a world pioneer when it comes to data protection legislation and also the very regulation of the digital market. Recently, we had adopted also, and we were first, the Digital Services Act and the Digital Markets Act to continue to strengthen our ecosystem. And therefore, uh, I believe that with this robust regulatory framework, this will allow us to look forward to a future of cross-platform medical data processing and also sharing with unwavering optimism and also with peace of mind and confidence for our citizens and for our patients. The question that you might be asking yourselves today now might be, what's the European Parliament's role in all of this debate, in all of this discussion that we are having today? Aren't individual member states having direct competence when it comes to healthcare? And how the European Parliament can be a real driver when it comes to medtech? What are you, Alex Aju Saliba, doing in practice to push forward medtech at a European level? So let me give you one very concrete example of how we can bring change from the European Parliament. Basically, earlier this year, from the very start of the beginning of the Czech presidency of the Council of the European Union, I pushed forward an initiative together with a number of members of the European Parliament coming from different political groups, coming from different member states to push the Council Presidency and also the European Commission to develop a strong European mental health strategy. And I'm going to dissect a bit the proposal that we had to the Czech Presidency, which my proposal is resting on four main pillars. The first pillar is the issue of awareness, the issue of promotion, prevention of medical Health, of mental health issues which are afflicting a wide array of persons, 
catering for their very specific needs. The second pillar is the promulgation of the directive on the right to disconnect without further delay, which can definitely help in this regard. And also the promulgation, and I'm going to focus on this pillar today, of a directive on the regulation of the use of AI technologies in the workplace to detect early signs of mental health issues which are afflicting our workers and therefore we can prevent and give immediate treatment in this regard. And last but not least, I also called on the Council Presidency to commit towards building a more equal, a more inclusive, a more sustainable European economy and society, which would be resilient against pandemics and various other global challenges, which will, as we have seen during the COVID-19 pandemic, which will negatively affect the mental health of our citizens. And as I said, I'm going to focus on the third pillar, which is, and I'm going to pitch on that, which is the issue of how we can use AI to prevent mental health issues in our workplaces. And as you already know, AI is already being used on a regular basis to protect the health, for example, of children, of young adults in the, in the sphere, for example, of digital gaming, with digital platforms providing early warning signals and advice at times uh, on forcing users to take a break to protect them from overexposure when it comes to uh, staying connected with digital gaming and therefore having negative effects such as mental fatigue. However, this same concept that we are using when it comes to this particular example, digital gaming, is not being replicated where we need it most. For example, the high-stress environment that we spend most of our time in, our working places. And from the very start of the pandemic, a number of research that was conducted at European level is showing that the biggest issues that we are facing when it comes to mental health problems are coming directly from overstress, from the issues of being always connected within our work, working places. With the technologies that we have at our disposal, we can accurately predict when workers are basically nearing to their limits, when they require rests, when they are mentally and physically overexerting themselves. And this can aid employers, this can aid unions, and this can aid directly regulators to adopt real-time measures that can bolster health and safety on our working places and also prevent casualties on any type and any form. Stress-induced conditions are preventable, but people, especially those working in very demanding industries, might fear speaking out about their symptoms, thinking that their career progression might suffer if their superiors think that they are trying to offload part of their responsibilities onto others. AI would reduce the risk of workers keeping these dangerous levels of stress and anxiety repressed, since health and safety officers within the company's hierarchy may be alerted with red flags of situations which can better guide them to give and seek the necessary assistance. AI could also help directly our employers and employees to find the right balance when it comes to tasks management, which would allow employees to maximize their family time, to maximize their leisure time, and finally, creating the optimal conditions for the right to disconnect, to work well and truly take off. And as we know, when we have our workforce which has good mental health, this can lead directly to more productivity on our working places. Imagine having automated tasks being perform performed by sophisticated AI outside office hours instead of having to reach out to employees who should, in theory, be resting with their families and enjoying their friends during this time. I believe that the health of society is intrinsically linked with the health 
of our workforce. And thus is why I am adamant that the use of medtech in this, in this sphere can be of great benefit to our workers and to society in general. On a different note, I am also pleased that the topic of medicinal cannabis is also being discussed in a separate forum with, within the wider conference being organized by Sigma International. This is another policy area which I hold very dear to my heart. And it is something which has been on the European Parliament's agenda for a number of, for a number of years. With the first resolution being presented in the plenary of the EP way back in 2019. Although single member states are taking and are uh, commencing a number, of, a number of pilot projects with regards to medicinal cannabis, uh, with some legalizing medicinal cannabis and making it widely available on the markets, European regulation on the matter remains totally fragmented and totally incoherent. We have no general definitions when it comes to medicinal cannabis. We have also some member states which are still criminalizing patients and criminalizing also medical professionals who are prescribing the same medicine. I shall not digress too much on the subject, but I firmly believe that it is high time for the European Union to have a unified legislative framework that facilitates Business, business and promotes the consolidation of a single European medical cannabis market for the good of all citizens being affected by a wide range of conditions that would definitely um, be beneficial and would be better treated with the use and with the therapeutic, therapeutic effects of cannabinoids. Once again, before I conclude, I would like to thank the organizers for welcoming me to this conference as a keynote speaker, but also I would like to thank the organizers for bringing up all the startups, all the industries in Malta, which are working and performing so well in MedTech in this under one roof in this conference and also giving them the right amount of visibility. I look forward to learning further about MedTech and the accelerating progress that we are making also as a country in the sphere and also the challenges that we have to continue to attract investment and to continue to also to gather in Malta the right innovators. I wish you the best of luck in your endeavors in this field. The doors of the European Parliament are always open. They are open for, um, for innovators who want to make a positive impact on the life of European citizens, a positive impact on the life of European patients. And I promise my full cooperation and assistance when needed. Again, thanks for the invite and I wish you all the success during this very interesting conference. Thanks a lot.